Welcome to our third lecture. The topic is Contemporary Approaches to Studying Intercultural Communication. We will focus on the following questions. The social science approach, second, the interpretive approach, thirdly, the critical approach, the fourth, the dialectal approach, and the last one, the lingua professional approach. As we mentioned in the previous lectures, the need for effective communication among the people of the world has never been more pressing than it is at the start of the 21st century, as intercultural communication takes place when the two cultures interact. In order to be effective, global education must be integrated throughout the curriculum. Mindful communicators approach information about other cultures with an open mind and break through of stereotypical categorizations of members of culture that are different from their own. They, are, they also strive to see the world from different perspectives of other cultures. This approach can go a long way toward decreasing and even preventing unintentional conflict. If we define the notion mindfulness, it means the practice of being aware of your body, mind and feelings in the present moment, thought to create a feeling of calm. In the example, mindful can be used to alleviate feelings of anxiety and depression. The importance of mindfulness in intercultural communication has been thoroughly discussed by Stella Ting Tomi. In communicating across cultures, she talked about the benefits of being a mindful intercultural communicator, which include creating a feeling of being understood, supported and respected in the individuals with whom you are communicating. She emphasized the need to go beyond one's preconceived notions to strive to gain knowledge about other cultures and to acquire skills for effective communication and conflict resolution. Mindful intercultural communication is defined as interaction with members of other cultures, in which an individual strives to understand the cultural values, benefits and norms of other parties, and to use that understanding to adopt his, her communication style to achieve a meaningful exchange and a win result. In other words, rather than use one's own preferred style of communication, a mindful intercultural communicator will adapt to the style of the other individual, group or nation involved in the communication encounter. For instance, if a US student is communicating with an international student from Japan, rather than begin a conversation abruptly, a common practice in the US he or she will begin with a formal greeting, since uh, that would be the way the Japanese student would be used to starting a conversation. Mindfulness is primarily a question of awareness. This is not necessarily a new discovery. Nowadays, in contemporary political science literature, it is very fashionable to advocate political awareness as a starting point for any political solution. If we are aware of the need to be sensitive to and respectful of the difference among cultures, we will be more likely to carry out the necessary steps to gain knowledge required to communicate mindfully. Students in our course do not need to have extensive knowledge of other cultures to become mindful intercultural communicators. They just need an awareness of the importance of intercultural communication and an openness to new viewpoints. There are a number of approaches to intercultural communication, but during this course, students will be introduced to the four approaches to study intercultural communication and give them an understanding of how they can be used. The four primary approaches to the study of intercultural communication are social science, interpretive, critical and dialectical. Since its every development, intercultural communication has been an interdisciplinary field. The various approaches to intercultural communication scholarship have their roots in the disciplines that helped shape 
the field. These disciplines are anthropology, linguistics and psychology. The influence of each of these fields can be seen in the way we study communication across cultures today. The field of in linguistics helps us to understand the relationship between language and other cultural systems. The field of anthropology helps us recognize cultural patterns and realize the importance of nonverbal communication. The field of psychology brings us to light the role of human recognition in understanding and categorizing the patterns of behavior of members of other cultures. The first one is the social science approach, which is based on the assumption that human behavior is predictable and that there is a describable external reality. This approach, also called the functional approach, is based on research in the fields of sociology and psychology. Scholars seek to describe and predict behavior by using the social science approach, and they frequently rely on qualitative methods. These scholars believe that culture is a measurable variable and that culture influences communication in much the same way as personality traits do. The goal of the social science approach is to predict how culture influences communication. Scholars seek to study the way culture influences communication by using social science approach. For example, As social science researchers might wish to examine the way members of different cultural groups use emails, the internet and other electronic media to communicate the members of them in groups to establish virtual communities. In such a study, they would be likely to isolate specific variables, like the topics covered on websites or the level formality of used in email messages. The next is the interpretive approach. Interpretive researchers are interested in describing human behaviors which they believe to be unpredictable and creative. They believe that culture is both created and perpetuated through the means of communication. The interpretive approach uses qualitative research methods that originated in the fields of anthropology and linguistics. These methods include field studies, ethnographies, observations and participant observations. Interpretive researchers typically become directly involved with members of communities they are studying and often form close relationships with them. The interpretive approach studies culture from the perspective of members of the cultures being studied rather than through a framework imposed by the researchers. Here is an example to the inter uh, interpretive approach. When conducting her study of elderly Japanese people forming virtual communities online, the researcher Kanayama was interested in describing the behaviors of the elderly people and understanding how they interact with one another when forming virtual communities. She found that self-disclosure through sharing stories and memories was an important part of achieving membering in the virtual community. The critical approach views reality as subjective and focuses on the importance of studying the context in which communication occurs. Critical scholars view culture in terms of power struggles and study cultural differences specifically as they relate to unequal distribution of power within society. They are interested not only in studying human behavior across cultures, but also in affecting change in society. They believe that their study and anal analysis of the role of power in cultural encounters, they can assist people in opposing the oppressive forces in the society. Critical scholars believe that the goal of intercultural research is to identify and make explicit power differences in order to liberate those individuals who lack power in society. 
The dialectal approach developed by Martin Nakayama and Flores acknowledges the value of the social science, critical and interpretive approaches, and also requires that the research researchers do not limit themselves to the perspective provided by one of these approaches, and calls for the uh, simultaneous acceptance of all three perspectives. The founders of the dialectical approach, Martin Nakayama and Flores, have identified six dialectics characteristic of intercultural communication. Cultural individual, personal contextual, differences, similarities, static, dynamic, history, past, present, future, and privilege, disadvantage. These dialectics all relate to four building blocks of intercultural communication culture, communication, context, and power. Now let's describe characteristics of these six dialectics. First, cultural individual. This dialectic refers to the fact that communication is both cultural and individual. All people share some communication patterns with members of groups to which they belong. At the same time, all people also have unique individual communication patterns that are idiosyncratic. Personal contextual characteristic has to do with relationship uh, between the social roles that we play and how they interact with our communication patterns on the personal level. Social contexts often shape the behaviors of individuals Roles related to our social position and our professional standing may influence on our communication behavior. Some social roles require that we behave in a very formal manner, the way a lawyer in a courtroom or a scientist in a laboratory communicates will be a result of the context in which he or she is operating. Differences similarities dialectic recognizes the fact that people are simultaneously both similar to and different from one another in many ways. These similarities and differences exist both within and across cultures. There are real differences between the way members of various cultures communicate. Members of Arab cultures communicate more differently than members of Asian cultures. However, when we focus on differences among cultures, we run the risk of stereotyping others. Static dynamic dialectic examines the fact that culture and communication patterns are both static and dynamic. Some cultural and communication patterns are relatively stable, while at the same time cultures are evolving and changing. While cultures are influenced by the prolification of the technologies, they will adapt these technologies to their cultural patterns and values. For example, a study by a Korean researcher found that email use in Korea was influenced by Confucian dynamism cultural value dimension, which emphasizes respect for elders and a strict adherence to social order. Most employees working in a virtual office environment in Korea did not use email to communicate with their superiors because they felt it did not convey the appropriate level of respect to one's bosses. The next dialect refers to the need to be aware of both present conditions and historical influences as they affect intercultural communication. The last dialectic, privilege disadvantage, brings together the strengths of the social science and critical and interpretive approaches to studying intercultural communication. Throughout the history of humanity, different languages have served as lingua franca on a regional basis. In Europe, it was Latin first, with French coming next, which was fairly recently replaced by English. Lingua professional approach to intercultural communication is rather important in teaching a foreign language, as teaching a foreign language needs acknowledging the student with cultural aspect of the language. Due to this fact, the lingua professional approach is the approach of mainly to teaching language combining cultural approach and personality-oriented approach.
Relations between teachers and students are based on partnership. Mutual communication is aimed at reaching a common goal. The process of intercultural communication has an open character and is focused on goals, motives and interests of each student as well as the whole group and, what is more, on the teacher's personality and professional activity style. The personality-oriented approach involves changing basic interacting patterns of a teacher and student during the process of intercultural communication. Specific phases of training correspond to each stage of particular culture learning. Here are the following phases of teaching distinguished. Information comparative, comparative adaptation and application phase. Developing intercultural communication competence is achieved with the help of the receptive productive exercises during the first year of training, reproductive productive exercises during the second year of training, and productive creative stage is achieved uh, in the third and fourth years and on the advanced level. During the first year of, the, of training, most of the exercises are of receptive productive character. For example, while reading a textbook, they may meet some new concepts. At first, it is difficult for students to understand these terms. After the teacher explains, they tend to understand. At the same time, students see the importance of interaction, role and cross-cultural exchange. Students perceive the information received, process it, and at a later stage, they use it to make up their own reports on topics again. While teaching foreign language to the first-year students, cultural approach aimed at the wide cultural training is introduced. It is done through a deep study of common cultural knowledge, later it is applied to specific areas of economics, cultural approach is also known to perform five functions – evolutionary, educational, training, cognitive and professional. Reproductive productive exercises develop sustainable behavioral skills in the situations of intercultural communication, improve intercultural analytical skills, and assist to solve search tasks of intercultural communication, such as preparing for and holding interviews, discussing intercultural communication problems, modeling situations of intercultural communication, role-playing, and etc. At a more advanced level, productive creative stage, students are given vast opportunities to show their own creativity. Productive creative tasks are aimed at offering opportunities to students to express themselves, to take the initiative in the learning process and participate actively in defining contents, methods and tools of international communication, for example, defining issues in business games and active participation in preparing and analyzing projects on intercultural orientation, realization of international or multinational projects. As a result, project work is gaining more and more popularity among teachers and students. So, we come to the conclusion that all people share some communication patterns with members of groups to which they belong. At the same time, all people also have unique individual communication patterns. The dialectical approach brings together the strengths of the social science, critical and interpretive approaches to studying intercultural communication. It allows for a much broader perspective on the study of communication across national identities and prevents us from falling into dichotomies that tend to reduce rather than enlarge our views of other cultures. And the importance of lingua professional approach to intercultural communication and practice-oriented method to teaching the course of foreign languages for professional communication must be emphasized. Thus, 
The practice-oriented model of intercultural communication has the interactive character uniting the results of both theory and practice of intercultural communication and methods of teaching foreign languages for professional communication.